Hey, I'm R.G. Skadberg, attorney with CCSK Law, where we uh, try to simplify the law for you. I'm going to tell you now, um, there's some stuff going on in the law right now that um, really can't be simplified. <laughs> we're going to try our best. Um, and, and this is dealing with, you know, we've all heard, we're dealing with some weird times right now. Uh, we are... Uh, hearing that there's all this money out there and that the government's doing so right by us and they're trying to get all this stuff to us. And the challenge is the government doesn't have a system to take money from the federal level and distribute it to people in an easy fashion. So um, this video, what I'm going to talk about today, this little Facebook Live thing, is going to be geared towards workers. If you were an employee of a company or if you were a member of the gig economy or an independent contractor, uh, this is going to be geared towards you. If you are a business owner and you had a business where people worked uh, or still work and maybe you're, you're, you've downsized a bit, uh, this is going to be uh, not the videos that you're going to watch. What you want to watch is the videos that Isaac did. Isaac Carr of uh, CCSK Law did a series of videos about the emergency loans through the SBA and also the PP program. And you'll want to watch those because those are more pertinent to the business side of things. As a worker, um, we have tens of thousands of people suddenly without jobs. Unemployment filings are just blowing through the roof. And there's a lot of confusion about who should be applying, how you should apply, when, and, what's, and what the process is. So what we're going to talk about today, and, and if uh, I'm going to pop this out in a couple of places and and uh, we'll, we'll work through it. If I see some comments, I'll try to address them. I'm going to cover um, a few different topics in general. This will be out there. You can share it with somebody who might need this um, uh, to help try to navigate this process. Because um, honestly, it, it, the, the law is confusing in general. I mean, a lot of this stuff is confusing if you had to enter it you know, pre-pandemic. Uh, but what we're dealing with now is a lot of um, things being wedged into things that don't normally uh, work that way. So we're going to talk about two, uh, uh, let's see, we're going to talk about what um, and how unemployment um, is or supposed to be. <laughs> Uh, doing um, super exciting stuff to be watching, obviously, uh, right now, and uh, we'll get this thing going and start from there. So I always have a habit of ending the video thinking I have to hit a button to submit. I guess that's just old man me. So uh, two categories of people out in the working world that the state is going to distinguish when it comes to this unemployment thing. Now I will I will preface my presentation on the fact that the state workforce uh, group, the Indiana Workforce Development, Department of Workforce Development did a, um, a Facebook live show last week and I watched it and I will say it was very confusing. Um, part of the problem is they're being pushed into making a system work that's not designed to work the way it needs to. And so they're, they're, and the other part of this is they are also now dealing with numbers of people that they've never had to deal with in such a short period of time. So, hey, Deb, hope things are well. Um, and uh, um, so Deb, in a, in a previous life, I don't know what Deb's doing now, but in a previous life, I think one of the things I'm going to talk about would be pertinent to, um, to what, what Deb did. And as we talk about the different types of employees, so I'm sorry, different types of workers. So uh, the um, hey, Mark, what's up? And cut, cut back. Um, so the the thing you need to understand is workers are not all the same. So we are um, going to we're going to try to define this because traditionally for unemployment, you had to be an employee. That makes sense. Unemployment insurance, you were an employee, but you may have a job where you feel like you're. A, you know, a worker or an employee, but you're not officially an employee of a company. Now, what's important to understand is there's a huge distinction between a person who is employed by a company and a person who works for a company as what one might call an independent contractor. A lot of confusion around that term right now. 
Uh, I think it's being misused in some situations, but we will define it as an independent contractor or this other great term that's come about and is now being used like it's been around forever, someone working in the gig economy, the Lyft driver, the Uber driver, the DoorDash people, the shipped people, right? You were out there as an independent contractor just doing your thing and, you know, kind of a separate um, worker for the larger company. Um, so th there's, there's two categories, employees and then this independent gig economy thing. I'm going to write that up here because I'm going to refer to it. And hopefully, you can see it. All right, so there are distinct differences between these two classes of people, and it's going to go to the very thing that we talk about when it comes to this unemployment process, okay? So an employee, how do you know if you're an employee versus an independent contractor? If you, at the end of last year, received a W-2 from the person you worked for, that's a good indicator that you were an employee. That little W-2 reported how much income that person paid you, how much in taxes was withheld, how much in FICA was paid. And so it it is a it is a clear indicator that you are employed by that company. So you are an employee. How else? What if you weren't there at the end of last year and you didn't get a W-2? If you work hourly for someone and you report hours and you have an hourly rate that you get paid, then that is more often than not going to be an employee relationship. How do I know for sure? When you get a check that let's say you thought you got $1,000 worth of work that you put in because you had an hourly rate and a number of hours that added up to a gross $1,000, but taxes were withheld or FICA was paid. Um, and so the $1,000 is less than the check. I'm sorry, the check you receive is less than the $1,000. That's a good indicator that you're an employee. An independent contractor, what would be a good... So in this group, let's say you were a server at a restaurant. The restaurant cut back, they changed, they closed, and now you know, are no longer working there. Um, you would have been an employee and you would now be unemployed. And that's going to be what we're going to talk about why you'd want to go through this unemployment process. You worked at a manufacturing facility, you worked at a retailer, and you were cut because they closed or changed their, their business model or whatever, whatever it might be. You were an employee. Independent contractor or gig worker, uh, gig economy worker, would be someone, like I said, like an Uber driver or an independent contractor might be someone who was worked at a salon, worked at physically at a salon, but had your own clients. So you rented space at a facility, a salon with other people, and you had clients that paid you directly. You paid the salon rent or whatever overhead you had to pay. And so that would make you an independent contractor. The salon didn't write you, you didn't report hours and get a check back from the salon on a weekly or biweekly basis, nor did you get a W-2 at the end of the year. You probably got a 1099, may have gotten a 1099. Um, your gig economy workers, that's what you would have gotten, a 1099 to report how much income that they took in based on your work and how much they paid you. Now, taxes weren't withheld. Um, FICA wasn't paid. They didn't contribute anything to your Social Security. You're supposed to report all that on your taxes when you got a 1099. Um, some of those situations, you may not have been a 1099. You may have just been a sole proprietor and you just paid rent as a vendor, if you will. But you had your own clientele. You took the money and you paid overhead. If you didn't get a W-2, you're probably over here. Now, traditionally, in unemployment, this would not qualify for unemployment insurance benefits. Understand the program that pays you money if you're unemployed is an insurance program that employers pay into on the chance that they have they, that somebody loses their job and they, they have to pay some benefits. So the state of Indiana has a requirement that employers pay into, for most of us, I think, I know we do, unemployment um, unemployment insurance benefits, insurance policy. The benefits are what the employee receives. So if you're here as an employee, 
this is probably not going to look much different than if you would have applied for unemployment benefits six months ago, heck, three months ago before this pandemic. The, there are a couple of qualifiers that we'll talk about when you go through your claim filing that are different today here than they would have been a couple of months ago. And we'll, we'll highlight those. Normally, again, these this category of people would not have qualified to apply for benefits. The reason why we're going to talk about why both need to apply is because of this magic money the federal government's pushing down. We've all, I'm sure, heard that there, you know, there's this $600 out there and it's coming weekly. Um, reality is it's not here. Um, <laughs> it's, I don't know what the holdup is, but the feds haven't distributed or the state hasn't figured out how to get it out. Whichever way it is, no one's seeing it at this point. Um, it's coming. They're planning on it being here. It'll be important for you to do what you need to do so you're getting to the front of the line or at least in line when these things start to happen. Hey, Robin and, and Ron Hines, old uh, radio pal and uh, an high school friend. Uh, so this um, th this is going to be something you're going to do. And, I, and I, you'll, you'll hear me say this multiple times. We, it's not going to make sense as you're going through the application process in a couple of different situations. And you just kind of have to push through it. OK, um, you've got to be in the system. You've got to be registered so that when the six hundred dollars comes through, you're going to get it. OK, um, so let's talk first about if you are, if you've never had to apply for unemployment, this is an, in and of itself daunting. Um, as an employee, we're going to take them in two steps. There's going to be a lot of commonality here at first when we're talking about the initial application process. You're you're going to go to the same website. It's unemployment dot in dot gov. I don't think I can write that big enough for you to see. I'll put it in the I'll put it in the comments. Um, so unemployment. Um, I need like I should have had somebody type this stuff up for me. Unemployment.in.gov. So I'm not, you know, messing messing this up. So that is the website where everybody's going to start in this process. OK, it has nothing to do with whether you would qualify previously or not. This is just how we get started. Now, the very first thing that you're going to have to do is set up an Uplink account, okay? Uplink is this, I guess, the, the, the way they administer the users, and you're going to need some information for that. You're going to need your, you can, you're going to have to have an email address. I, I think probably in my world, I think everybody has an email address, but in reality, I run into clients all the time who said, oh, we don't get on that computer. Um, so you've got to have an email address in order to file with uh, with unemployment and set up your email, uh, your Uplink account. So an email address, you're gonna need to have uh, a driver's license or a valid state ID, because there's a number on there you're gonna have to match up with the state. You're gonna need an address, a social security number, your date of birth, and then a phone number. Okay, so that's the information you're gonna need. You're gonna set up this Uplink account. It's gonna email you back. Remember I said, you have to have an email. It's gonna send you an email and you're going to confirm your account. Hey, Kathy, miss seeing you. I, I, I'm so happy I'm taking it. And this is going to happen a lot. This is a totally ADD thing. I'm glad I was able to take advantage of the meatloaf before you all had to had to uh, uh, you know close the doors there. I hope you all are doing well. Um, Kathy with uh, Valpo Velvet. So um, great to see her. Great to see uh, other folks join us and certainly share this as you see the opportunity. OK, that said. Um, Back to your previously scheduled program. Um, Uplink's going to email you. You're going to confirm your email. You're going to end up back in the unemployment application process. Now you're going to need information about your employer. Now, again, being downtown, um, I eat out a lot. I know a lot of people who work in the restaurant business down here, as I just referenced, Kathy. Um, so it, it, I love that about being downtown. My doctor doesn't necessarily love that about me being downtown, but I love food. And this is a great place to satisfy that habit. So um, I know a lot of people that work in the industry and I know how just devastatingly harsh this thing has been to many people. And, and the crazy thing about sort of the double cut of this is there were a lot of workers, workers like the people on the front line that were working at multiple places in the restaurant business down here. And to suddenly just have them all quashed is, is just it's just awful to watch. And so this is one of the things that we've, we've tried to 
we've tried to do to help help people get through this because this is just a real to say it's a pain is not even close. I mean, I just I feel for what everybody's going through, and have just been desperately trying to figure out what we can do to try to help people get along. So it's going to ask for your last employer. If you were working at two places and you lost your job simultaneously or very close to that, the thing I'd recommend is to use your last employer as the person where you worked the most. If you lost both at the same time or right around the same time or because of the same circumstance, make that the person who had the where your more hours were being reported to the state. That's going to be important because there's a formula that's going to count, I'm sorry, to calculate your benefits. It is an absolute formula driven thing. Hours reported, here's this, here's that, boom, here's your benefit. Okay, it's it, it's not really something you can argue, so so front load it and and make sure that you're putting yourself in the best spot. I'm not saying make it up. If you lost a job a month before the other, you got to you got to take it you got to take it as it is. So Report the last. Now, there will be a circumstance later where you can appeal to get the additional um, lost wages. Try. I, I don't know that that will work. Again, there's fewer people working um, actively in the offices there, and there's way, way more people coming into the system. So the appeals process is probably going to be slowed down a bit. But get the best situation you can for yourself. Um, you're going to need that employer's name, address, phone number. Um, and the reason why you're unemployed, the reason you're unemployed pandemic. Uh, so you're, I think you go to other and you just write that. Now, as you go through this claim process, you're going to have to answer some questions that make it look like you're, you know, obviously not doing what you need to be doing. It's going to ask, can you work? Are you seeking work? Are you disabled? Should, have you applied for other? They're going to ask all these different things and just answer them honestly and move through because they're, they're having to waive some of their normal rules in terms of reporting and job seeking and visiting offices and all these things because they're their whole process has changed a bunch. So get through it. As I keep saying, just get through the process. Don't eliminate yourself from it. Um, you've you've got to get to the end in order to be there um, to, to be able to gather whatever you're going to be eligible for. So you get to the end, you answer the questions. Then now suddenly there's a screen that'll come up and talk about the pandemic application of your job loss. Answer those questions, work through that, and then you will submit that. You're going to be prompted to put your bank account information in. It's the state. It's, I guess, as safe as it can be, but that's how they're going to push money back. And so you want to get that direct deposit in place so that as soon as dollars are distributable and on the schedule, they're going to distribute them, you're in line and your account's ready to be deposited too. So again, your routing number and your bank account, you're going to need those. Uh, the routing number will identify the name of your bank. So get through that process, then you're done. Now, if you are in this category, and things looked relatively straightforward and 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 I, honestly i don't know how they're going to do all these measuring and checking against their normal process because they're supposed to check with the employer to verify hours and all this stuff well there's a lot of employers aren't there so they've got some windows i don't know if they're compressing them but just know you're in the system and the date that you report as the starting date of your unemployment isn't going to change okay you want to make sure you use the right date um, because it will go backwards. You may have lost your job back in March and you're applying now because you didn't know how to or that you should apply. They'll, they'll figure out where the benefit started and then what that benefit amount is. And they will pay backwards once you're, once you're approved. Now, that's in this, in this category here, okay? You may get a denial because one of your things you checked was you weren't seeking a job or you were able to work or something along those lines. In that situation, if you get a denial, you will get an email and they will walk you through. I do this because we've done this. Um, we got the denial, but but what we got initially was a denial saying we didn't qualify for benefits. That was it. That was a standard denial. My, my, my wife didn't have reported income from her employer, so she wouldn't qualify. We knew that. Uh, so we got that immediate denial. And what it says in that is to appeal. Now, if you're in this category, employee category, and you were denied, you will want to appeal. And I will put in the links in the comments, the page to walk you through the process of, I can do that now. Um, to file an appeal, you'll go to this website and it explains it. 
um, the process of, of doing that. Well, that was an ugly link. So, I don't know, there's our fine governor and a link to filing appeal with the Workforce Development Office. It, it, it has to be done in a timely manner. Ten days from your receipt of that denial letter, you need to get your appeal in. So make sure you do that because if you don't, then they can keep you out and, the, and they have to start the process over and you'll have a new date of eligibility, which may short you on what you would otherwise be eligible for. So employees who get denied appeal. Right now, here's the thing that also happened in our household. We got a second email the next day that said, oh, by the way, um, if you were denied for this reason, don't appeal. But if you were denied for this reason, then do appeal. So that um, th that's, again, this is the group of people that should appeal. If you were an employee and you are denied, you want to appeal. All right. All right. So that's that. Now, let's talk about this other category of people who, again, normally would not be and are not going to be eligible for unemployment insurance benefits. Uh, and that is the independent contractor and gig economy worker. <laughs> it's so funny. I, I don't know. I, haven't, I just haven't grasped this concept. I'm getting old. Um, I'm not getting old. I am old. Uh, so, again, we defined who these people are. The process that you're going to start is going to be the same. You're going to go to unemployment.in.gov. I have to keep checking that because when I say it, I, I don't trust myself. Unemployment.in.gov. You're going to open or you're going to start your Uplink account. You're going to get the confirmation. You're going to go back and you're going to start the claim process. You're going to report an employer um, who you worked for and go through that process. You're going to put your bank account information in. And as I said, then you're going to get denied. Because you have not your employer, you don't have an employer. So you, I guess, are your employer in an independent contractor or sole proprietorship situation. You didn't report any any uh, income to the state. So, but you weren't supposed to. You didn't have to. Um, so don't worry about that. Don't think you've done anything wrong or that the state's going to come back at you or you know find you have having done something wrong. Um, Again, go through the process, submit it. It's not going to look good on paper. You're going to get denied. We know that. But the kicker is you will then get this email that says if you're self-employed or you're an independent contractor or a gig worker um, that do not have sufficient wage, wages to establish a regular unemployment insurance claim, do not appeal. That's what it says. Um, what it uh, What it will question is if you if you think that there was reported income that should have been calculated then again now you go back to the other appeal process but if you're an independent contractor sole proprietor you know someone working for a salon someone working for let's say a paint crew someone doing something where you were basically paid straight up taxes weren't withheld unemployment wasn't paid um, social security wasn't contributed to then then you're going to fall under this and you're not going to have reported wages that would allow you to qualify for unemployment benefits. So now you, you need to understand that you're no worse for wear. The reality is you're in the system. You're in the system. Yeah. You're in the system. <laughs> There's just some lines. Sometimes movies just jump into my head, right? Um, I'm in the system. So, you need to be in the system, right? Once that federal money, that magic money from the feds, how and when and how much eventually sorts through the process, this is going to be the system that will deposit that $600 a week into your account. Now, how they determine who is really eligible for all this? I don't know. I, I don't know if there's some other re-evaluation that they're going to do to say that all the people that applied under this category qualify for that. They, nobody knows. Nobody's saying specifically, specifically what's going to happen. I will tell you <coughs> that um, uh, I will include a link to this fine infographic that our state put out during their webinar last week and that orange box that you saw there 
reference is the pandemic unemployment insurance. Now, there's several lines going into the box, apply for benefits, right? So you are unsure if you qualify, you are eligible, you've exhausted benefits. And then there's multiple lines coming out, but it doesn't say why you come out into which box. So if you want to look at this, it's got some information on it. Um, uh, it, it, uh, it, it's not very helpful, uh, from the perspective of really knowing what you need to do and, and how you need to get it. But, but it's there, it kind of outlines that stuff's happening. It does talk about the fact that if you were a traditional employee and you would have qualified, this is additional, in, um, dollars that would go over the top of what your benefits would be. So if you're in this category, it's going to be six, you know, and they calculate your, benefit to be 150 or 250 or 350 dollars uh, i mean again that's a formula that they have calculated that 600 dollars will come over the top of that um and and it's there i believe they say till the end of june july i'm sorry the end of july 13 weeks of additional benefits 600 per week available until july 31st of 20. um Again, on this, it references, make sure you're submitting your vouchers. We're, we're, you're not doing that. You're, you're, that's just not not the thing you're doing. Um, hey, Michelle, thanks. Hopefully it's helpful. If, you, if anybody has questions, feel free to pop them in the box. I'd be happy to try to address what, what I can that, that's specific to your circumstances. I, I don't know everything because there's, again, there's a lot of stuff that's just not, not known. Probably the biggest is when the heck is this money going to get here? Uh, but we just don't know. Uh, it is, uh, it, you know, they passed this thing. This is part of the CARES Act that passed March 27th. This was that magic money that was going to be, you know, in everybody's hands, you know, almost immediately. And at this point, again, based on that uh, Facebook Live thing that the uh, state did last week, um, they don't have a time frame. They're not being told, hey, the big check's going to be to you on X date and you can deposit it and wait for it to clear. And I don't know how that money happens between st feds and state, but, um, but it's not just a matter of, you know, them. What is that? I started to call it the wrong thing. My kids are going to make fun of me, you know, them owing me money or chase paying me money. Um, there really is a, a mess of a process that has to be gone through. And then you somehow have to fit that process from the state to the people. And the state does have to do some vetting in it. And so it's going to take some time to get through the process. So um, someone was texting me here. I'm make sure I wasn't missing uh, anything I needed to worry about. Nope. Um, so so anyway, so that that's probably the biggest question that people have is when is this going to be here? And, and that's sadly the, the biggest question I can't answer. Um, but again, what will be important is not to wait. If, if you're in this category and you think, well, I don't need, if the money's not there, why do I need to, you know, get through the process? Because there's, what did they say? More than 120,000 new filings the last couple of weeks in the state of Indiana alone. Uh, the system is just going to be a bit slower. Honestly, I was shocked, sort of, that our denial letter came the next day. But they they must have some, you know, formula that, checks the numbers and immediately knew we weren't going to be eligible. So why delay that? So actually, I'm kind of happy about that. I wish they would have attached the other pandemic uh, don't appeal note because I don't know about you, but you know, when I, when I say something, maybe I don't have uh, the same authority at home as, as what I might have with somebody who, who doesn't know me uh, uh, have a, you know, 20 year, 30 year history with me. Um, but uh, but the reality is, you know, when we were going through this process and I was trying, trying to walk my wife through it, it's very uncomfortable for her because everything I'm saying is looking like I'm making her do something she shouldn't, she's doing not right or wrong or whatever it might be. But, but anyway, so that's, that's, that experience was good for me and her to have though. So I can share with you, it's going to be frustrating going through this application process because it's just not going to look like um, you're accomplishing anything. And, but, but again, I, ju I just have to reiterate that if you don't go through it, you won't be there for the money that will be available to, to these folks. Okay. So that's, that's really what I wanted to make sure we touched on that. There are two sets of workers. This is geared towards 
workers, right? Frontline workers, not business owners. Business owners have other programs that they need to apply for. This is for the workers, either the employees or the you know independent contractors, sole proprietors, gig economy workers. Um, you got to get into the system, set up your Uplink account, go to unemployment.in.gov, set up that Uplink account, get your claim process. If you're here, you're going to get denied. If you're here, hopefully you're in the system and you're and you know you start getting benefits. Um, but again, if you're going through the normal process, it's going to be a little bit slower than it normally would be because it's going to have to be reviewed and things are going to have to be checked. But get that date in the system because that's the date that you're going to want to be eligible or you're going to want to let them know that you're going to be eligible. So that is the process. You both start in the same place. Um, the result will be different, but the end game for this group of people is also what these people will benefit from. And that is that $600 being pressed down by the feds whenever that magic money decides to show up. Um, hope this is helpful. Uh, as I said, you know, normally we, we really talk about simplifying the law for people. Um, it's hard to simplify when the law still isn't done being written. Um, it, it just, it, it's, there's too many unknowns. And I think, um, You've got you've got some things that don't normally happen coming this way, and then you've got like the agency in the middle, the workforce development group. You know they're the ones that are normally processing these applications, and suddenly the volume that they're getting on the user end is huge, just massive amounts, way beyond what they normally have to deal with, and they're also in these you know stay at home worlds too their their workforce and things of that nature aren't working in the same ways that they've been so there's going to be some straining of the systems in that regard um trying to see if i can get everything on there the the uh, other part the feds we're still waiting for them to figure out how to get money to the states you would think it would be hey here's a check we're going to write it to you use what you need as you need it and, and we'll settle up later but that's that is obviously not how this whole thing is sorted down. So uh, if you have questions, I'll check back with this later. Um, I will try to put together uh, a little more concise uh, summary of this process and get that linked out. So uh, if you didn't get a chance to to watch through this um, or it just got too long and went over your, you know, just got beyond your level of patience, I, I can understand that. Um, so, uh, but again, super important, make sure you file, regardless of your employee type, your worker type, uh, get in the system um, and, uh, you know, make sure you take care. Okay. Uh, this is, again, crazy time. Um, the sun's out today, which is nice, which is causing my glasses to go a little darker than as I'm looking out of a window here. Um, you know, hopefully the temps will come back and we'll be able to enjoy some some outdoor time a little bit. Uh, but be safe. Um, you know, we, there's still no, I was listening to the governor's presentation today here in Indiana and, you know, everybody's still not sure. Time frames, things of that nature. Um, no one sounds like really wants to be the first to, you know, to sort of change the current, the current flow of things. Um, I appreciate everybody who's out there working and trying to get stuff done. And I certainly appreciate all those folks that have been, you know, displaced by this whole mess. And I hope everybody stays both healthy and, you know, that we can all get back to, you know, some semblance of our normal livelihood, our, our normal course of business, whatever that new normal is going to be, um, you know, as soon as as soon as everybody deems it to be safe. Take care. Questions, I'll, I'll keep an eye out for them. You can always give the office a call, 219-230-3600. If you're down in the central part of the state, it's uh, 765-999-1823. Not the simplest number to remember, 999-1823. Uh, that's in the 765. Uh, still getting down there some, not as much with uh, all the travel craziness, but uh, but still uh, we'll, we'll try to get down there and help folks. Or we, We're doing a lot of video video calls with people too. So it's been, uh, we're, we're doing our best to try to reach out to folks and, uh, and uh, meet, meet you where you are. So again, let me know if there's anything else I can address for you. I wish you all well, and uh, we'll, we'll continue to, uh, to work together and hopefully come out of this on the, on the other side. Thanks.